Radhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Jaya Girdari Hari Jaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Jaya Girdari Hari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janna Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janna Ranjana Yambu Nati Ravanna Chari Yambu Nati Ravanna Chari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 
राम राम हरे हरे Vishnupāt-Pramhamsa-Parivodhika-Chāya-Stotra-Satta-Sushimāt-Esi-Bhakti-Vedānta-Sāmi-Sopravopāt-Kīdha-Sopravopāt-Fāndara-Chāya-
So we will do the translation later. We will go first to the other verses. First of all, um, the situation here is that Maharaj Ambarish, who was a very pious, very powerful king of the of the whole uh, planet, and as such, he. Uh, um, because of his piety, he understood that so much wealth is coming, so much power is coming to me, so much possessions I have, so much luxury, so many people who want to serve me, so many people who want to glorify me. But due to his piety and due to his uh, Krishna consciousness, he was able to um, see that all as the mercy of the Lord, and he only saw himself as a servant. And on top of that, after in due course of time, he also prepared himself to become completely detached. So he was in that uh, stage where he was preparing himself to become completely detached of his uh, powerful uh, kingdom and at that time for uh, one year he did the uh, Ekadashi uh, Vrata and Dvadasi Vrata and uh, it ended around this time of the year Kartik time and then he for three days before the, ha the end he fasted he and his wife because she was also very uh, devotional and encouraging in devotional activities, then they uh, fasted entirely for the three last days. And then when the time was there to break the fast, and they had prepared uh, a big feast, and they had uh, given so many presents, um, so much wealth in the form of cows and calves, they had distributed uh, 600 million cows and each of the, the cows was full of milk and each cow also had uh, a calf. So, uh, the, and the, the horns were with gold and uh, uh, the hooves were with silver uh, bedecked. So, we see uh, so much wealth was distributed to the brahmanas and to the to the people to the citizens and and this was going on and it it was at the climax that the time for the feast and then some or other by krishna's arrangement durvasa muni arrived there who is a powerful uh, sage and um, the king received him well and king invited him also to take lunch but then he wanted to go and take bath in the Amuna uh, before taking prasada and that obviously that took some time and uh, and during this time, the time for breaking the fast was going to uh, uh, go over time. So then he uh, inquired from the brahmanas what to do, and, and, and basically uh, they also weren't so sure. But basically then he decided that uh, he would just drink water, because water is not considered breaking the fast. And, and, uh, and in this way, everything would be fine. He would be respectful towards his honorable guest, uh, Durvasa Muni. But some or other, when Durvasa Muni came back from taking his bath, and he took it differently because by his mystic power, he understood that according to his understanding, um, Maharaj Parikshit had broken the fast. And he became very upset. He said, oh, what is this? You invite me uh, as your guest to take a meal and you break, you already eat the meal before. So 
Durvasa Muni was fixed in his uh, understanding, and uh, so there was no question of discussing or anything like that. So he became very angry and, and red, uh, like when somebody becomes angry, they become red in the face, red in the eyes. So he became like that, very upset, and he pulled out some of his Muni's hair and he threw it on the floor and created a fiery demon. So then the fiery demon, he was ready to uh, punish, to kill uh, Maharaj Sambarish. Uh, but some or other, um, Krishna had another plan. So, because previously it is said that in one of verse 28 in the previous verse, it is said that being very pleased by the unalloyed devotion of Maharaj Ambarish, the Supreme Personality of Godhead gave the king his disc, his Sudarshan Chakra, which is fearful to enemies and which always protects the devotee from enemies and adversities. So then the Sudarshan Chakra immediately knew what to do and, and, uh, and instantly killed that fiery demon. And uh, then after killing the fiery demon, the Sudarshan Chakra went behind uh, King Ambarish, sorry, uh, Durvasa Muni. The, the special thing here is that um, King Ambarish, when the fiery demon came to him, he was very, he was basically meditating on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, he was not, he was not upset. He was thinking, whatever the Lord arranges is the best for me. Whatever he arranges. So even when this uh, fiery demon uh, appeared with big uh, fire and big light and, and, and very impressive, very impressive. He was just standing there and meditating on the Lord and see what the Lord would arrange because he felt, I'm not in charge, the Lord is, the Lord is in charge. If, he, if the Lord wants to kill me, nobody can save me. And if the Lord wants to save me, nobody can kill me. So that was, you know, he was fully Krishna conscious, ready for to be killed or ready to be saved, whatever happened. So then the Sudarshan Chakra acted in her uh, own way and killed the fiery demon. But the Sudarshan Chakra didn't stop there. She then went towards Durvasa Muni. And Durvasa Muni realized it's getting serious here uh, because the chakra came to him, the heat came to him, and he literally got the heat. He literally got the, uh, you know, he was under pressure. And, and then uh, if he flew away. He, he thought as a, as a mystical yog yogi, because he was very powerful, uh, as a mystical yogi, he could get away with this. And so then he went somewhere in the forest, uh, and then to some river, to some hills, to some grots. But nowhere he could find peace. Everywhere the chakra was uh, following him. So it didn't end there, in other words. So then uh, I thought, okay, I've done everything what I can do here. What is next step? Uh, so then he thought, okay, let me see the, the, the uh, creator of the universe, of the, you know, let, let me go to Lord Brahma. And then, uh, but Lord Brahma basically kind of dismissed him. And he didn't really help him. Basically, he said he couldn't help him. So then he thought, okay, let me go to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is very powerful, is very dear to the Lord. Is, is, is. So then he went to Lord Shiva, and uh, Lord Shiva then, he took the time to explain him that, look, you know, uh, the chakra is 
the Sudarshan disk, uh, the, the Lord is, is using that as the most powerful weapon. Nothing is more powerful than, than the, the Lord Vishnu's, Lord Krishna's Sudarshan chakra. There is nothing I can do. And, but if you want to be helped, then you should go and approach the Lord himself. And by uh, the grace of his great austerities he had done in the past, then Durvasa Muni was able to travel even to the Vaikuntha planets. So then he went to approach personally uh, Lord Vishnu and, and then Lord Vishnu uh, recognized and gave him the darshan, gave him the time to explain that uh, he, he is sold out to his pure devotees and if somebody offends his pure devotee then there is a reaction for that. So he had to either live with that or do the needful to rectify that. And also Lord Vishnu uh, explained that to him, that the only way you can be saved, your life can be saved, is by going to uh, Durvas, uh, going to uh, King Ambrish and ask forgiveness. That's the only way that uh, the Sudarshan Chakra can be appeased. So, Durvasa Muni um, was a great lesson for him. He, never, he didn't have this type of lesson since a very, very long time. Although he did many austerities, some or other, he never really got to understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his dear devotees. That was a, ch a big chapter in his life that was missing. He had many other qualities, more exalted than, than, than many, many people, but he did not have the particular uh, quality or understanding of who is the uh, Supreme Personality of God that really and what is uh, the, the meaning of a pure devotee and how dear is a pure devotee to the Lord. So, so by this meeting he understood uh, uh, and it's also mentioned that he had learned uh, a lot from this uh, heavy interactions. Sometimes we need some heavy lessons in life to learn because some or other we are too stubborn or too thick-skinned or whatever to learn. So sometimes we, we come across some uh, bigger lessons with the intervenes of the Lord or whatever is the exact uh, reasons behind. But in this case, uh, Durvasa Muni had, uh, was very strong confrontation because he taught himself to be very elevated, but now he could see that there are uh, personalities, there are pure devotees who are much more close to the Lord than he was and who have an, uh, a real understanding of uh, spiritual life, of, of bhakti of relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And even the Supreme Personality of Godhead uh, is very dedicated to these pure devotees. So then he went back down to the material world and he fell at the feet of uh, King Maharaj uh, Ambarish and, you know, he, he grabbed his lotus feet and asked for forgiveness. 
And Maharaj Sambarish felt very uncomfortable because by his own nature, Maharaj Sambarish was very respectful to, to uh, was very respectful to Durvasi Muni because for him he was a great saint, he was a you know, highly, highly guest. That's why he didn't even, while all this happened, uh, that, uh, that uh, Durvasa Muni was fleeing away from the heat and the chakra, all this time uh, uh, Maharaj Sambarish, he didn't even eat. He was still waiting for his guest to come back. And uh, so he, he was waiting there, you know, in all respect, so to say, for Durvasa Muni. So he didn't expect and he didn't uh, demand or he didn't, uh, whatever, he, he, he was not uh, thinking that that's what he would do, but that's what he did. And because he, uh, Durvasa Muni surrendered to, to him and, and, and prayed for him, to him to be forgiven, then um, Maharaj uh, Ambarish was very merciful and immediately started to pray to, uh, to the Sudarshan uh, Chakra and to Lord Vishnu. He immediately started to pray uh, to, you know, to stop the, 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 the attack of, of uh, wanting to give a very strong reaction, wanting to basically kill him. If he wouldn't have surrendered, that's what will, would have happened. But, but um, King Ambarish did everything possible to save him. Although he is the person who wanted indirectly through the fiery demon, he wanted to kill him. Still, because of his pure nature, and um, he, he wanted to save the person who wanted to kill him. So, so this is a very uh, extraordinary uh, behavior and uh, action that only can be done by, by pure devotee. And here in these uh, verses, in this chapter, the, uh, the Sudarshan Chakra is, is described uh, because the Sudarshan Chakra is not just, uh, you know, like uh, a tool or something. Sudarshan Chakra is also a person, is also a devotee of the Lord. And, uh, and works under the direction of the Lord, like all of us, knowing or unknowing, but... That's another thing. He knows and he acts directly under the instruction of the of the Lord. So the the su means auspicious or divine, and darshan means vision. Eh? To have darshan of the deities means to see the the, the deities. So sudarshan sh chakra means the auspicious vision or the divine uh, vision. And um, so it's Lord Vishnu's personal weapon. It's the most powerful weapon that exists. There is no weapon that can defeat the Sudarshan Chakra. There will never be a weapon that can defeat it, and there has never been a weapon. And, uh, that's why even when, uh, when uh, Asfatam tried to please his father by... Uh, uh, sending his powerful Brahmastra, Brahmastra that he had received also to, by uh, performing austerities, uh, when he sent it to uh, Uttara, the, the, the wife of Abhimanyu, who was pregnant from King Parikshit, then, uh, then the Lord sent his chakra uh, and he protected the, the, the baby the, in the womb, he protected him from any damage, any heat, any whatever uh, power there was to, to kill the child. Because, uh, you know, because uh, Asvatam didn't want the Pandavas to have uh, continuous generations, so he wanted to kill the only uh, child in the lineage of them. 
So, so the Sud Sudarshan Chakra is, is as such, uh, it has uh, thousands of sharp, sharp edges, it has uh, thousands of spokes, it, is, um, it, it produces immense heat, and it is also worshipped by the, by the Vaishnavas um, as a deity who, who helps us as devotees to clear the difficulties on the path of, of bhakti, of, on the difficulties to, that are in the way to attain the Lord. So, and of course the Sudarshan Chakra an annihilates the, the demons. Uh, sometimes there is a battlefield with demons where, where all the demons are, are killed. We see that in different pastimes. So we will now uh, continue reading from verse 8. I will only read the English. O indefatigable one, one who cannot be fatigued, when you are sent by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to enter among the soldiers of the Daityas and the Danavas, you stay on the battlefield and unendingly separate their arms, bellies, thighs, legs, and heads. So King Ambridge is preaching, glorifying, basically, the uh, Sudarshan Chakra and the Lord for their activities. Next verse 9, O protector of the universe, you are engaged by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as his all-powerful weapon in killing the envious enemies. For the benefit of our entire dynasty, kindly favor this poor Brahmana, poor Brahmana meaning Durvasa Muni. This will certainly be a favor for all of us, he is saying. Text 10, here in 10 and 11, he is um, giving some credits which he has built up over the years. He is giving some credits as a weight for towards the Lord and towards the Sudarshan Chakra. To, uh, he puts his, his positive credits in the scale to help them decide to give mercy to Durvasa Muni. If our family has given charity to the proper persons, if we have performed ritualistic ceremonies and sacrifices, if we have properly carried out our occupational duties, and if we have been guided by learned brahmanas, I wish in exchange that this brahmana, Durvasamuni, be freed from the burning caused by the Sudarshan Chakra. Text 11. If the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is one without a second, who is the reservoir of all transcendental qualities and who is the life and soul of all living entities is pleased with us. We wish that this Brahmana Durvasa Muni be freed from the pain of being burned. 12. Sukadev Goswami continued. When the king offered prayers to the Sudarshan Chakra and Lord Vishnu, because of his prayers, the Sudarshan Chakra became peaceful and stopped burning the Brahmana known as Durvasa Muni. 13. Durvasa Muni, the greatly powerful mystic, was indeed satisfied 
when freed from the fire of the Sudarshan Chakra. Thus he praised the qualities of Maharaj Ambarish and offered him the highest benedictions. 14. Now Durvasa Muni starts to speak. Durvasa Muni said, My dear king, today I have experienced the greatness of devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For although I have committed an offense, you have prayed for my good fortune. He continues. 15. For those who have achieved the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Master of the Pure Devotees, what is impossible to do and what is impossible to give up. What is impossible for the servants of the Lord, by the very hearing of his holy name, one is purified. O King, overlooking my offenses, you have saved my life. Thus, I am very much obliged to you, because you are so merciful. 18. Expecting the return of Durvasa Muni, the king had not taken his foot. Therefore, when the sage returned, the king fell at his lotus feet, pleasing him in all respects and fed him sumptuously. So Durvasa Muni uh, gave his obeisances and asked forgiveness but also Maharaj gave his, uh, did the same basically. He also gave his obeisances to him. Verse 19. Thus the king respectfully received Durvasa Muni, who after eating varieties of palatable food, was so satisfied that with great affection, he requested the king to eat also, saying, please take your meal. So it's a little bit as if they go back into the previous setting. The, here, Durvasa Muni, after being served basically personally by the king, is telling the king, please take your meal. Then Durvasa Muni said, this is the, this is the verse on the board. So I will read the verse and also the purport. The purport is like half a page. Durvasa Muni said, I am very pleased with you, my dear king. At first I thought of you as an ordinary human being and accepted your hospitality. But later I could understand by my own intelligence that you are the most exalted devotee of the Lord. Therefore, simply by seeing you, touching your feet and talking with you, I have been pleased and I have become obliged to you. Purport. It is said, Vaisnavera Kriya Mudra Vigyehana Bhujaya Even a very intelligent man. This is referring to Durvasa Muni. Even a very intelligent man cannot understand the activities of a pure Vaishnava. Therefore, although Durvasa Muni was a great mystic yogi, he first mistook Maharaj Sambarish for an un un ordinary human being and wanted to punish him. Such is the mistaken observation of a Vaishnava. When Durvasa Muni was persecuted by the Sudarshan Chakra, however, his intelligence developed. So he had very strong association and his intelligence developed by the, that association. 
Therefore, the word Atma Medasa is used to indicate that by his personal experience, he would understand how great a Vaishnava the king was. When Durvasa Muni was chased by the Sudarshan Chakra, he wanted to take shelter of Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, and he was even able to go to the spiritual world, meet the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and talk with him face to face. Yet, he was unable to be rescued from the attack of the Sudarshan Chakra. Thus, he could understand the influence of a Vaishnava by personal experience. Durvasa Muni was certainly a great yogi and a very learned Brahmana, but despite his being a real yogi, he was unable to understand the influence of a Vaishnava. Therefore it is said, so Sri Prabhupada re repeats the same verse twice in this purport, Vaishnavera Kriya Mudra Vigyehana Bhujaya Even the most learned person cannot understand the value of a Vaishnava. There is always possibility for so-called jnanis and yogis to be mistaken when studying the character of a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava can be understood. That's the closing sentence. A Vaishnava can be understood by how much he is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead in terms of his inconceivable activities. So here this uh, Sri Prabhupada makes this point very strongly that even the most learned man cannot understand the words and activities and <coughs> and symptoms of a person situated in love of Godhead. So, <coughs> by Krishna's arrangement, Durvasa Muni, uh, who was so intelligent, who had done so many austerities, unequaled uh, practically, then some or other he, he had not the fine understanding of Vaishnavas, of especially pure devotees. But by the grace, by the mercy of uh, this association he had with Maharaj Parikshit, by the mercy of the Lord also, and by the mercy of the Sudarshan Chakra, uh, through this incident, which was a very strong incident, a very remarkable incident, he got realization, he got uh, insight in, uh, in a pure devotee. He could recognize the pure devotee. And Maharaj Ambarish's uh, reaction was, was also very, very special uh, to, to, for him to just, I mean, after fasting, after doing a yagya for one year, then fasting for three days, then being offended by uh, the Muni, by Durvasa Muni, still, you know, he waited for him to come back and even to eat he had broken the fast only with drinking a little water that was that was all he had done and he was basically humbly waiting for his honorable guest to come back and then to to feed him to honor him to uh, give him due reception and just forgive about what he was just what he just did, he was just trying to kill him, and he, for <coughs> and he forgave. 
by his own nature and pure, uh, being pure-hearted and by understanding that, that how merciful is the Lord and, and just like uh, <coughs> Pralat Maharaj who also prayed for his father's well-being although his father wanted to kill him on several occasions and so this is uh, so he came to uh, the Vasamuni through this incident came to his senses and then uh, you know got higher realizations which allowed him to understand the pure devotee and Sri Prabhupada explains how you know, it can be mistaken. Uh, we can be mistaken by taking a Vaishnava uh, when he is a uh, pure devotee to, to, to think that he is an ordinary uh, devotee. This is an, a mistake. Of course, it's also a mistake to take a pretender to be a pure devotee. So, so these are fine lines which are not so easy to, because in both ways, uh, you know, we can be, uh, we can be wrong. We can be definitely wrong when, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's a pity if we are wrong in that way, when we take a pure devotee for an ordinary person, that's a very wrong way of, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great mistake. But, in this world, we know also that there are a lot of pretenders and people who want to tell the, you know, the world that they are pure, uh, while they are not. So, so we can be wrong in, 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 in two ways. I mean, Sri Prabhupada ends by saying Vaishnava can be understood by how much he is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead in, in terms of his inconceivable activities. Um, uh, like it is <coughs> inconceivable when Sri Prabhupada on the uh, 13 August 1965 left Calcutta for the United States it was inconceivable that uh, he could uh, start a worldwide movement in, in a time span of 11, 12 years. So that's why also when, the, when a reporter asked him for uh, some, that if he could show some powerful things he had done and then he referred to how his movement had expanded all over the world as, uh, you know, as a miracle. So, so Vaishnava can be understood by how much he is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead in terms of his inconceivable activities. So I will stop here. Uh, any comments or Questions, Mataji? Hare Krishna, uh, how can we tell if somebody is a pretender? How do we know? Sri Prabhupada says that you know, somebody can be hidden as long as he, or can hide himself as long as he doesn't speak. Once he starts speaking, then he uh, should reveal himself. So, so normally, if uh, if a pretender speaks, normally we as devotees, from studying Sri Prabhupada's books should be able to come to the conclusion if he is a pretender 
that's the but that's Hi Krishna, thank you for the, <clears throat> the nice class. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I became curious about one thing in relation to the Sudarshan Chakra. You were recounting in the beginning how uh, the Lord had, was, because he was favored with Ambarish, then he gave him the Sudarshan Chakra. But then, you know, you're saying that the Sudarshan Chakra is not an object, you know, like a, a weapon that you just put on your shelf and keep for when it's a personality and we were hearing recently this, actually, a Shakyavesha avatar of the Lord. So in, one sense, in, what, in what sense did the Lord give the Sudarshan Chakra to Ambarish? And does that mean, if he gave it to him, does that mean that Lord Vishnu no longer was in possession of it? Or, you know, I was just curious about all that. If you can explain, please. Well, the Lord is famous for expanding also, so he can also expand the Sudarshan Chakra. But my understanding is that, that the Lord, uh, and I think Sri Prabhupada describes it somewhere, but I, I, I don't recall it directly, uh, that, that uh, Lord Vishnu, knowing that this was going to happen, he gave previously the ch Chakra to him. So the Chakra was with him, and then my understanding is that the chakra acted. That's, that's my limited understanding of what happened. Uh, maybe, uh, you want to comment on that? As far as I uh, understand from reading the Bhagavatam, that the Sudhasan chakra was deputed by Krishna to protect Ambarish. So he was given he was given the service of you stay here and you protect Ambridge. That was Sudarshan's order from the Supreme Lord. <laughs> but I, I just, I have a question, an observation that in, it seems like if we're in doubt whether someone is genuine or someone is not genuine, um, other than following a wrong instruction, going against guru and sadhu, it's better to err on the side of offering respect than to err on the side of assuming somebody is false and not offering respect. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, better safe than sorry. So, in that line... I, I think so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fine line, it's something we have to be careful for, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it sounds right to me, what you say. Yes, uh, no. Will enlighten us. No, I have a question. Oh, okay. there's, um, there's one statement here in the verse which I found quite interesting. The last two words, Atmameda say, where Devasa is saying, by my intelligence I understood. And this seems to be very much in contrast to Arjuna's statements in the last chapter of the Gita where he says, Tvat Prasada Maya Chuta, that by your mercy I understand. I wonder if you could comment on that. Yeah, my comment would be that uh, when he says by my own intelligence, then one can also take it that the experience he went through, because he is saying this after he went through that, and after he had uh, learned and realized certain things. So, so then my understanding would be that that, that, that entered, that became part of him, that, that this pastime, this realization, this uh, the Lord instructing him, uh, the, the attitude of, of uh, uh, King uh, Ambarish, all this, uh, he, he has absorbed all this and taken within his intelligence and it became part of him and he has understood, he has understood now. 
that would be my my take on this. Mm. I know what you mean with the two. Uh, but but wasn't uh, it the same for Arjuna? He he was resisting. He didn't want to kill his relatives. But then after Krishna gave his, him instructions, he had realization and said, Karasheva Shamdava, I'll do what you say. So it seems like it was the same thing, but there seems to me to be quite a contrast between the mood of a pure Vaishnav, where he's saying, yeah. it's only by your mercy, and this situation where Devas is saying, by my yeah. intelligence I've understood. I mean, it can be also, uh, I mean, he, he definitely got particular realizations on this. That there is no doubt about that, and that's described also. But at the same time, it doesn't make him directly a pure devotee, while Arjuna was a pure devotee. Uh, so the difference is that the pure devotee sees directly, fully the hand of Krishna, and he may see that he has realized certain things, but he still calls it his intelligence. So there can be also a subtle uh, difference there. It's an interesting point. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi, Krishna Prabhuji. Prabhuji, in the last, line, uh, last portion of the purport, mentioned that uh, devotee can be understood. Devotee can be understood how much he is favored by the Lord. So in this uh, line, there are people who are kind of against his own and they are flourishing. So how how do we understand this part? They are not pure devotees. Okay. So uh, we are speaking here about uh, you know. Pure Vaishnavas, a pure Vaishnava can be understood by how much he is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead in terms of his inconceivable activities. To criticize ISKCON is not an inconceivable activity, it's more a uh, conditioned activity. So, because if we can learn something from their criticism, we should take that part but we shouldn't take it as absolute or as, as uh, you know, anything. But if you can learn something from, from what they say, or if there is some truth in what they say, then we can correct that. That's a positive way of... Uh, so we will stop here. So Prabhupada ki Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shishu Radha Madhava ki jai, Shishu Panchatattva ki jai, Gaur Premanandi.